um, AB 3121 was a major milestone for California and this nation. Uh, California, I believe, and is the largest state in the union. It is the fifth largest economy in the world, and one of the uh, and and interestingly enough, the far one of the farthest states away from what we would consider the deep south, uh, the heart of Dixie. Uh, however, the information you have discovered in your hearing shows that even being as far away. Uh, from Dixie as one could possibly get physically, uh, California nonetheless has been impacted by the system of slavery. And those who live in California have been the victims of systems, whether it's Jim Crow laws or restrictions in housing or, or being um, placed in schools that were dysfunctional and so forth and so on, that, that there was no hiding place from slavery in this nation. Uh, and so it becomes important and even an example for the rest of the nation hopefully to begin to, to look at themselves because if California, as far as we were, if slavery was as pervasive here as it is across the nation, it says that clearly there needs to be a lot more work done in other states and there needs to be a national effort at that. Some asked me, why didn't we do the national effort? And I had to say what so often has been said, how long, not long, can we wait for, a, a, for a, some resolution to the issue? Uh, Langston Hughes uh, talked about waiting for things that are so long that before you know it, the dogs are biting at your door because obviously uh, others are still organizing against you as you make an effort to try to be patient, to be thoughtful, and to try to move an agenda. Uh, so it is, it, it is important, as I indicated to so many, uh, when I authored AB 3121, that I realized that many of the issues that are going to be addressed in this bill um, I have not, have not been resolved. There are a lot of unresolved issues. So with that in mind, this is not a perfect bill. It's a good bill. And it requires from you the kind of conversation that needs to happen about who gets what. And so I wanna share with you today my thinking and my conversation that occurred as I was authoring the bill, interacting with a number of communities and groups to help you understand what, what, what takes place. Reparations is designed to repair and heal the damage done to Africans for 400 years of slavery and Jim Crow. Recent immigrants do not share our common oppression at the same level. And I say this because I have numerous friends who are recent immigrants and a son-in-law who's a recent immigrant. They can trace their ancestor. Things that I have limited knowledge of and access go only go up until maybe 1870 but not to the depth as that my grandson, my, my son-in-law experiences. Reparation is for those who are the dependents, descendants of slaves first because of the devastation they suffered from hundreds of years of no wages and no ability to own land and accrue wealth. Their ties are permanently severed from their homeland and their ability to return to Africa is almost impossible. They are truly, unfortunately, American. I am a living witness to that, having, having traveled to the continent for dozens of times over the last 30 years, have met and gone to see folks whose villages I'm supposed to know, have interacted supposedly with former uh, relatives, and I come back each time happy that I went, but clearly aware of the fact that I am truly an American, that slavery stole from me my ancestry and my heritage. And no matter how I wear African clothes as I have, and many of you have been to my house to see my collection of fabulous African art. The reality I come back with every year is that I have nowhere to go but here. That is not the case for those who are immigrants in this country, who come here from Africa, who still maintain their ties and their relationships, who still own land in, the, in, their, in their homeland, in their country, and can always return and have for them a sense of pride and dignity about who they are and where they are. So those who lived during the slave period, and even if they were free, were never fully free and did not have access to the resources oftentimes that they needed to maintain their life and to be free. So I'm very clear about a couple of things. One is that I, I would never have written this bill if I thought at some point in the process of providing reparations that I would look at the line if there was such a thing as a look at the line that those standing in line for reparations and that I would discover that those at the front of the line were those who had very limited, if any, impact at all on, from slavery. 
I would be very upset if I discovered that only those who had the resources, who had the greatest amount of information, who had, um, who had been more prepared than others, found themselves at the front of the line. And those who suffered the most from generation to generation out of slavery, from poverty and lack of resources, would find themselves once again at the end of the line because they got the message late. We didn't do enough to basically help them to understand that they had been the victims of a poor educational system that did not prepare them for the university. And as a result, they did not benefit from it at all. Kaminsky talks about it, I, I was reading in your last um, uh, report, what my staff gave me, but he said it is a really, it's an issue of, of not about being black, it's an issue of descendancy and lineage. And he's absolutely correct. There will be many black people who do not deserve reparation, but there will be many who obviously whose lineage, and they are black and their lineage clearly says very strongly that they deserve to have reparations. Reparations is about harm that has been done, its extent and, and who basically should have that harm mitigated by some form of repair uh, to that individual. So I hope I'm clear about what I meant at the time. We had conversations and that's why one of the things talks about basically those who are descendants of slaves being a, a handled first and others may be secondary. Those others secondary are those who, who Im, were impacted by slavery, who lived in the United States during slavery, who may have been free, but also had their visions limited because of the slave system itself that did not treat them equal. They were not treated, treated as equal citizens. They had limited ability and they also could become vulnerable as a result of the system of slavery. Those who came after slavery, who did not, who may have experienced Jim Crow, who may have done various things, came here with their lineage intact, came here with their resources intact and came here oftentimes looking for a better life. We did not, we were kidnapped, brought here against our will. All of our past was taken from us. And we truly have nowhere else to go but here. Thank you.